Week two is over and a lot just happened. Unfortunately, there was a lot of injuries, especially to the running back position. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the seven running backs that you must be adding before your league mates do in fantasy football. And now we have to start with the most pressing news, and it has to do with these guys. And you might be saying, Sal, who the heck are these guys? Samaji P. Ryan and Carson Steele? Well, maybe you know. Well, they're the backups to Isaiah Pacheco. And the reason why we have to start here, unfortunately, our king Isaiah Pacheco was one of those guys who got injured in week two. Pacheco left the game. At first, it was an undisclosed injury. Then it came out that it was an ankle injury and he was clearly in pain on the sideline and then he was emotional in the locker room which is always you know never maybe a final decision on what's going to happen here but it maybe indicates that it's a little bit more serious than if he wasn't emotional undergoing further tests to determine severity so here's the deal i'm recording this at 4 a.m my time on monday those further tests have not happened yet by the time you're watching this maybe they have but we do have a little bit more context here because there's a video of isaiah pacheco basically him sustaining the injury you can see he's getting bent backwards and uh, my friend deepak on twitter sports md analysis a great follow that you should be following as well he said the video puts high ankle sprain which is never good that's four to six weeks minimum and potentially even more and liz frank fractures on the table now again this is just a video this is not knowing exactly what's happening here being emotional in the locker room like we mentioned may weakly suggest higher severity after missing this game now again if it's anything to do with the high ankle or if it's anything to do with a liz frank he's missing four to six plus games and yes that's where these guys and samaji p ryan the veteran they signed right before the season who was cut by the denver bronco and carson Steele, who is is a rookie for them out of UCLA played one season there after transferring from Ball State that's where these guys would come into play now again I'm recording this at 4 a.m so if it comes out that it's a low ankle and he's not even gonna miss week three or maybe he only misses a week great but for right now these guys are the priority and I would imagine that they split this backfield maybe even a third running back gets involved or the Chiefs sign somebody else who then that free agent signing would become somebody that you need to look at maybe a Leonard Fournette or so but as for Samaji P Ryan he's somebody who becomes at least interesting because this 29 year old veteran is somebody that a lot of teams including the Chiefs that's why they sign him trust in not only pass protection to protect Patrick Mahomes but also catching passes and believe it or not last year Samaji P Ryan out of every single running back in the NFL was actually number two in yards per touch number two in yards per touch 6.7 yards per touch he was fine on the ground four and a half yards per carry but really where he made his money last year was right here with the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson so again different quarterback different organization quarterback and organization but he caught 50 balls 50 balls was top 14 in the NFL he was very efficient on his receptions I believe he ranked number one if I'm not mistaken yeah number one amongst all running backs in yards per out run last year and now he's on the Kansas City Chiefs so we have to pay attention to an efficient running back who can catch passes like that joins a powerful offense like Kansas City and as for Carson Steele this is a really big running back I mean this is a six foot 228 pound running back maybe can become the red zone back as you can see right here on player profile the red zone back for the Chiefs he had over a 1700 yard season at Ball State then last year he transfers to UCLA puts up a thousand total yards and now he's been kind of used in the preseason and to start the year as like a fullback for Kansas City but he's not a fullback like don't get it twisted this guy is a running back he was uh entering the NFL as a running back coming out of college and again 228 pounds is interesting when you're talking about a red zone role so I don't think that there's any type of workhorse running back role here that's going to one for one replace Isaiah Pacheco again there's a chance that that could happen with a steal and or a P Ryan but I think they'll split this backfield maybe somebody else gets involved but as you can see from Mike Florio on Twitter Isaiah Pacheco in week two his role was elite 70 percent of the snaps 19 carries five targets in five catches on those he had a full workload for the second straight week so if he's able to dodge a severe injury then I don't really want to pick up any of these guys because it should still be the Isaiah Pacheco role moving forward but as of right now that's seeming in question maybe even in doubt so we'll have to see what further the news happens now next up I want to talk about a guy in the Minnesota Vikings backfield and that's Ty Chandler available and believe it or not 71% of leagues and here's the deal I get a lot of people saying none of these guys are available in my leagues you're like the one percent you're like the top 10 percent of fantasy players right that's why you're watching this video but guys like Ty Chandler are available in over 70% of leagues and if you're in one of those sicko leagues where you're the guy typing in the comments <laughs> none of these guys are available in my leagues well just wait because we're going to get to the deeper guys who are guarantee are available in your leagues trust me on that later in the video now the reason why ty chandler is in this video is a few reasons first off aaron jones left the game in the fourth quarter he did return to the game but ty chandler was involved early and often throughout and especially once jones left the game and chandler was good it's not like he just got more touches and then only put up like you know two yards per carry no he went out there he had 10 carries he had 82 yards he had a couple explosive runs this is exactly what we saw out of chandler last year and we even saw this a little bit last week and we kind of touched on it from last week these are the snap counts according to pff the snap counts are right here in this first column those are the numbers right there you can see ty chandler played 20 percent or 20 total snaps and aaron jones played 30 total snaps in week two so it's not that far off like it's pretty close to a split backfield but aaron jones going for 100 plus total yards kind of made a lot of people not realize that ty chandler saw 44 percent of the carries on the early downs so really after week one all we needed to see out of ty chandler was maybe a couple of third down snaps a couple of snaps in the two-minute offense and 
quietly we start to hit a 50 50 backfield now that didn't exactly happen in week two where we can pull up the snaps from week two right here and this is factoring in aaron jones leaving for a couple of plays in the fourth quarter jones 33 total snaps ty chandler 19 but the difference here is on those snaps ty chandler is seeing usage 10 carries on his snaps compared to nine for aaron jones now jones got the targets but that's to be expected because again jones is the rb1 in this backfield when healthy but that is the key when healthy and this is important because aaron jones left and went to the medical tent in week one sunday he missed a couple of plays the injury is undisclosed but this is very highly critical to point out because he's an aging running back ap approaching 30 years old and last season when he was on the green bay packers we can pull it up right here aaron jones if we scroll down to it struggled with injuries and not just any injuries this guy had a hamstring injury a knee strain injury and not just for like a week or two let's look at it he was on the injury report for nine weeks for six weeks he missed not just four three more games this was a guy who was on the injury report for almost every single week last year starting in week one when he had that injury going all the way into the playoffs so the injury concerns are real here right as the season goes on we don't expect it to be right away week one it could happen that he gets banged up like he did here in week two but as the year goes on the younger back ty chandler might be the one who's more durable and he's a pretty good back who can handle a full workload like he did in his one start last season when he had 150 total yards and like he did throughout the entire year last year for minnesota vikings when he averaged over five yards per touch so i think the 26 year old out of minnesota the former north carolina running back is an interesting name to be adding and i also think that antonio gibson another 26 year old running back this one out of memphis is interesting to add and here's the deal antonio gibson is available in 84 percent of fantasy leagues right now people yes he's also available in 84 percent of leagues i don't even know what the fuck that voice is i think i'm just like high on coffee at 4 a.m but here we go you can see antonio gibson has over 100 in total 100 total yards in week one he's a decent flex play for 11 fantasy points he has 12 total touches now here's the deal this was very nice usage but he's still not the starting running back on this team right like he only had 16 total snaps in this game this is by far and away through two weeks Ramondre stevenson's full workhorse role 49 snaps in this game meaning he played 72 or se yeah 72 percent of the snaps and he also saw if you were to see the carry distribution 61 percent of the backfield carries through two weeks Ramondre has been a dynamite workhorse back for fantasy the guy is averaging 24 touches per game like if you drafted him again you you have a steal on your hands especially if this new england offense is going to look as good as it has the first two weeks or at least as decent compared to what we thought it would look like here 22 touches you can see right here for Ramondre in week two goes for 17 fantasy points which seems like a letdown compared to last week when he popped off even more for 120 plus yards but it's solid now the reason why I'm saying you know why uh, Antonio Gibson is somebody worth an ad is because this Patriots rush offense looks like it's actually going to be good and it's not just a fluky thing through two weeks no they made the decision to do this based on their new coaching staff their new offensive coordinator this year is Alex Van Pelt he comes over from the Cleveland Browns who basically the last couple of years under Alex Van Pelt to have been like top five rush offenses top 10 rush offenses especially when they have their running backs healthy like Nick Chubb who wasn't healthy for most of last year but the point being Alex Van Pelt came to this team and said yeah we're gonna run the ball a lot more than we did last year here in New England and Ramondre Stevenson this offseason multiple times said I really like the offense Alex Van Pelt is building for us so we've already seen Ramondre Stevenson benefit and as soon as week two we also saw the backup running back Antonio Gibson benefit for over 100 total yards and Antonio Gibson is a very talented runner in his own right a former wide receiver slash running back hybrid in college at times he's a dynamite in the receiving game and we've seen now and at times during his time with the Washington Commanders that he could be good on the ground when put in the right situation and this might be that right situation speaking of Alex Van Pelt from Cleveland remember the days with both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb and both those guys were top 30 to top 24 running backs in fantasy yeah maybe there's a chance that happens for Antonio Gibson and that would definitely be great to have on your rosters not the waivers now it's sort of a pleasant surprise because the New England Patriots were ranked to have the worst offensive line entering the season and here's the deal I don't think they have the best offensive line through two weeks I just think the scheme that Alex Van Pelt is putting out there is kind of hiding some of their weaknesses how long can this last the entire season i don't know but i think the patriots are actually closer maybe to the 20th ranked offensive line in the nfl than dead last and that's actually maybe all that we need now as for gibson himself he signed a one-year deal this offseason you can see here this is when the tweet came out from the patriots team they signed the versatile running back antonio gibson he signed a one-year deal with the team and gibson's coming off of a career high year he had a career high 48 receptions last season he was actually a very good running back for washington their running backs quietly were solid last year between brian robinson and antonio gibson gibson averaged 5.8 yards per touch the fourth best rank in the nfl so yeah samaji piran and antonio gibson there's something you learn you could talk about at the bar we're both top five in running back yards per touch last season and antonio gibson now is entering an offense where maybe he can get going on the ground even more now again i'm not saying antonio gibson's taking over this backfield i'm saying ramondre stevenson is the clear workhorse and antonio gibson already has flex upside like he did in week two and if anything was to happen to ramondre who's battled injuries not only last season but also during his college career well then you get antonio gibson working 
into a potential workhorse role for 16 to 18 plus touches a week the next man i want to talk about is a guy who's younger than 26 he's not he's barely 20 years old and this is going to be braylon allen the rookie for the new york jets and here's the deal braylon allen in week two he popped off he had a couple of touchdowns both in the air right here on two catches and on the ground on seven carries he had nine total touches 11 opportunities with his targets the guy goes for nearly 20 fantasy points in this backfield now of course Brees hall is there Brees hall actually scored more fantasy points than him in week two that's what you would expect most weeks but here's the exciting part the rookie braylon allen looks like the clear running back two on this team and based on his week two usage he could honestly be a flex play in some deeper leagues we know Brees hall is the running back in this backfield we don't have to worry about that but braylon allen did take 20 snaps away from him Brees hall sees 41 percent of the snaps so allen's playing already as a rookie a middle round rookie by the way 35 percent of the snaps and earning 33 percent of the running back carries as soon as week two in this offense that's encouraging and now maybe the biggest surprise to me is this second column right here the numbers in this second column are the routes run so you're running a route you have an opportunity to earn a target when you do that braylon allen ran a route on 12 routes Brees Hall 21 routes which is maybe quietly concerning again it's just week two so we don't have to panic here for Brees Hall but Braylon Allen running that many routes and earning four targets on those routes right and actually putting up production two catches finding the end zone is interesting like Aaron Rodgers is trusting this guy already which is not something he usually does with rookies especially rookie running backs now if you're not familiar with Braylon Allen if you didn't watch our, our draft videos and the prospect videos that we put out during the fall make sure you come back or the spring make sure you come back during March and April for those Braylon Allen is a monster this dude is 235 pounds he's an absolute beast six foot one 235 pounds actually has according to player profiler pretty solid speed for his size 451 at 235 pounds is 95th percentile that's top five percent speed of all time to attend the nfl combine and the dude is insane because he bypassed his final year of high school to go to wisconsin to play defensive back and then before the season even started he trained changed to the running back position and not only did he change to the running back position to just kind of like be this depth guy no he went out there as a first year ever playing 17 year old and goes out and has 1200 total yards he backs it up with another 1200 yards season and then last year between his rushing 984 and a couple of receptions he goes over a thousand total yards so this guy has 3,000 total yard seasons he's averaging like 1300 yards a year in college and the dude was 18 and 19 and 17 years old I mean as you can see right here he's literally 20.6 years old when he was drafted into the NFL he barely turned 20 years old one of the youngest players ever in the NFL draft he was definitely the youngest player in this NFL draft a fourth round pick by the New York Jets and he kind of has everything that you would like if something was to happen to Brees Hall if Hall was to miss time he he has the size he has the ability to pass protect and catch passes he could be a three down workhorse back he could be your next Jordan Mason in fantasy so before that happens before Brees Hall maybe misses a game or two and again we have seen Brees Hall miss games like he did a couple of years ago with the torn ACL well then Braylon Allen becomes just a week in and week out starter for fantasy at least for those first few weeks to see how they hash out the backfield so again yes how Jordan Mason right now is like a clear-cut top 10 maybe even top five running back for fantasy with Christian McCaffrey out that could be Braylon Allen next so go get him and for the crowd of people that says he's not available in my league we're getting closer to your league then because he's currently available in 92 percent of leagues that is nine out of ten fantasy leagues more than nine out of ten he's currently available now this next guy is currently available in 99 percent of leagues but before you get there i just want to show you our waiver wire tiers tool this is our waiver wire tiers for last week there's also a drops tool on this as well for your top drops that you could add to pick up these guys you can see the different tiers and rankings so you know exactly who the top priorities are at every single position last week it was pretty obvious and easy jordan mason jk dobbins zach charbonnet were top uh, one or tier one running backs you can see similar tier one names uh, in the section for the wide receivers in every single position now this is just one tool that i release each week i release about five or six different tools and i update those every single day for all of you actually over fifteen thousand of you and you can get this tool instantly right now that your league mates might actually have so you might want to get it immediately when you join the fantasy blueprint and the question is do you want to win your fantasy league that's what we've helped over twenty thousand people do just the last few years combined and if you want to do that you can sign up for our fantasy blueprint risk-free this is the big thing risk-free through one of our two partners this year now what is that mean sal well it means when you sign up through one of our two partners this year it's just a one-time payment of 10 bucks for the entire season and if you don't make your fantasy playoffs i just give you that 10 bucks back no questions asked there'll be a link in the description below there's just some simple steps that you follow whichever partner you want to sign up for right here there'll just be three simple steps and then you can join the 15,000 plus other people using the tools that i use in all my leagues you can also scan this qr code right here on the screen you can pause the video you scan it you go ahead you get that risk-free blueprint you have yourself a nice time because don't you want to get to your fantasy playoffs don't you want to win your league don't you want to smack around your league mates this fantasy blueprint will help you do just that now that guy who's available currently in 99 percent of fantasy leagues he plays for the cleveland browns and his name is deontay foreman yes deontay foreman that guy who used to play for texas in college like 10 years ago yeah he's still in the nfl he's still 230 plus pounds and he's still actually producing in decent ways now here's the interesting thing about deontay foreman let's go with this view i like this view a lot better deontay foreman in week one plays just one snap 
literally plays one snap as you can see right here just runs a route on that snap too doesn't even get a carry so now heading into week two it's like okay jerome ford this is his backfield he had nearly 20 fantasy points week one he was looking great well sal that's not the case apparently because in week three the cleveland backfield became a three-headed monster you can see jerome ford 32 snaps still leading the backfield just barely but deontay foreman goes from one snap in week one to 27 snaps and look here this is a guy who had a neck injury got carted off the field in training camp came back got slowly ramped back up so maybe he just wasn't fully ready in week one maybe right and then you could also see pierre strong sees 10 snaps he actually left this game with a hamstring injury so he might miss some time but this was going to be a three-headed backfield now maybe it'll be a two-headed backfield nick chubb's still not expected to be back anytime soon still in the pup list but this is concerning for jerome ford but it's encouraging for deontay foreman because it translated to look not a great fantasy day just six fantasy points but more importantly the usage 14 carries has one reception so he gets 15 touches in week two after seeing none in week one again this is highly alarming and concerning in my opinion for jerome ford but i'm not really concerned about the usage here because this is still a browns team that didn't have their st top two starting tackles their left tackle jedrick willis and their right jack tackle jack conklin in this game they just don't have those dudes up front to create efficient running lanes now with that jerome ford injury that we talked about the hamstring and then he did not return in this game i think he might miss some time moving forward if he had to actually leave this game maybe a week or two or more depending on how severe it is we might be looking at a two-headed backfield now between jerome ford who seems to still be the 1a here based on his usage we'll talk about that in a second and deontay foreman again ford played the majority of the snaps ran the majority of the routes here but he just did not see the majority of the touches like he did last week it was actually foreman who saw literally 65 plus percent of the backfield carries in week two and according to pff you can see right here the light blue is foreman the dark blue is jerome ford jerome ford is still playing the third downs you can see the pie chart he played half the third downs but the goal line touches in week two the two goal line snaps did go to deontay foreman which makes sense because he's literally 235 pounds and a bruiser and a physical runner that's what he's been known for his whole life so if you're getting deontay foreman even if he starts to split the backfield evenly with jerome ford but he's seeing that goal line usage and once those offensive tackles come back he could be an interesting name that shouldn't be available in 99 percent of leagues and if he's still not available in your league then yes you are the one percent sicko you are the problem and it's a good problem to have you're a fantasy football addict like myself but hey 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 when you say he's not available in any of our leagues out no it's just yours it's just yours push up those glasses it's just yours all right next up we'll get to a guy who's available in 66 percent of leagues and his name is bucky irving we mentioned him last week but after what happened in week two i think he's becoming a little bit more of a priority ad because his backfield running mate who's been highly efficient not only last year not only in week one but also in week two we'll talk about it rashad white did leave the game with a groin injury but as you can see right here according to underdog on twitter he did return to sunday's game but he left with a groin injury these are things that you know can end up popping up like kenneth walker left last week with an oblique injury and it didn't seem like a bad thing they were like after the game he was like ah it's not that big of a deal now he already missed he didn't even practice at all missed week two kenneth walker and his status is in doubt moving forward so i'm not saying that's the exact same thing with rashad white here but again these injuries they can actually flare up overnight they can get tight they can actually then become more of a problem so now here's the week two usage according to pff bucky irving plays 17 snaps rashad white plays 34 we know that that's the backfield split but more importantly is what i want to look at bucky irving gets seven carries compared to 10 for rashad white so the backfield carries are kind of split and once again rashad white like i mentioned earlier he hasn't been efficient he wasn't efficient in week two 10 carries again maybe the groin had to deal with this but this is just kind of what we've seen out of rashad white now 10 carries all he gets is 18 yards on those 10 carries it was a tough matchup against the lions defensive line bucky irving didn't have the greatest game either but this is the story now of one rashad white rashad white has been somebody who has just been highly inefficient through his nfl career so far and if that continues to happen if he continues to be inefficient it's just going to open more and more doors more and more doors if rashad white is inefficient the 25 year one running back out of arizona state it's going to open more opportunities for the rookie bucky irving especially if that rookie bucky irving is able to do what he did in week one where he took nine carries for 62 yards he had two catches for 14 yards he ends up putting up 76 total yards averaging like uh what was it seven yards per touch which is not really something that rashad white has ever done in his nfl career did it in college a lot rashad white was efficient in college but his nfl career hasn't been the case now if you're not familiar with bucky irving let me just tell you about him he's out of oregon he's a fourth round rookie he's 22 years old and this is a guy who you know during his college career was known as one of the most productive running backs in this year's nfl draft and we can pull up why right here you can see in 2022 it's the year that he breaks out he goes over a uh, thousand rushing yards we'll talk about his receptions in a second 2023 was his best year again over a thousand rushing yards but let's look at what he does as a receiver because this is the big part of his game 31 receptions in college two years ago last year 53 receptions at oregon now again he's playing with bo nicks bo nicks offense at oregon was known to be a check down offense that's kind of what they uh, the, the the knock on bo nicks he was accurate and efficient but checking down a lot to guys like one buck irving that's why the dude had a 13 percent target share 53 receptions depending on the stats that you look at buck irving was he an, an efficient receiver was he not was he a product of the system kind of like a clyde Edwards Solaire back in his days at lsu either way the guy put up
up those stats and for what it's worth he ranked number one in pff rushing grades the last two seasons now what he's known for best is his work in between the tackles he has a little bit of burst there in that little short area as well as some solid balance and agility but what he's also knocked for and what i've also been a little bit critical maybe not critical but i've just had some question marks about him is his overall size at 192 pounds now we know guys like devon chain and some other running backs even kyron williams they're small running backs who have found success but when you pair that with slow speed when you pair slower or shorter bodies with slower speed 4-4 four, four speed for or 4 five, five is generally decent speed for like somebody like me that'd be amazing but for a running back at his size at 192 pounds it's just 29th percentile all the way down here now it's not a complete that sentence because that's a similar profile to somebody like kyron williams and he's been great in the nfl and great for fantasy but he's kind of the outlier right that is an outlier we can't expect that to always be the case especially when a player like a buck Irving isn't the type of pass protector in college or even so far in the nfl from what we've seen as one kyron williams was which got him on the field more but the size and all that and what i think might not matter because the team does like buck Irving based on what happened in the preseason based on the fact that he got the rb2 job immediately just as a, as a middle round rookie says something that the team does like him and that's kind of what they were saying in training camp how much they like him so if Rashad White continues to be inefficient and gives this Bucks organization and the coaches more reason to give Buck Irving more touches well then he's probably going to have a larger role and somebody who shouldn't be available in 66 percent of fantasy leagues all right for you sickos out there after we talk about this man Rico Dottle who's available in 59 percent of leagues I'm going to talk about some guys who are available in 99 percent of leagues for all you sickos out there in your deep leagues but Rico Dottle is available in 99 percent of leagues and we saw a better workload for him in week two you can see right here he led this backfield with 30 snaps compared to 28 for Zeke it was still basically a 50 50 split he led this backfield with seven carries but six for Zeke so again it was basically a 50 50 split that's kind of what we saw last week Zeke's led the backfield by like one or two snaps Zeke led the backfield by like one or two touches but it was encouraging that we at least saw that in week two that we, that we didn't see some sort of widening that Ezekiel Elliott was out here now seeing more snaps more touches and Rico Dotto was becoming an afterthought no it does seem like a split backfield and if I'm betting on somebody for the rest of the season it's the younger more explosive more dynamic Ezekiel Elliott now the problem for the problem for one Rico Dotto is this past week Deuce Vaughn got involved they got a third running back involved now he only played 10 snaps but on those 10 snaps he sees four carries and that might not seem like it matters all that much but when you're a running back just trying to get you know eight carries 10 carries in a game and another guy's now in your backfield that does hurt your overall upside if you add that up over the whole season now here's the breakdown of the touches though and I think it's encouraging for Rico Dottle because Deuce Vaughn a smaller back who can maybe catch some passes he didn't see any of the passing down work you can see right here the two minute offense was basically a split between Zeke who's the dark blue and Rico Dottle who is the green the third downs were kind of a split there as well the short yardage went to Rico Dottle so the passing down role isn't being affected by Deuce Vaughn I don't think Deuce Vaughn as of right now is like a serious threat or really will stay in this rotation all that much but we'll have to see in week three but the thing that I want to point out here for Rico Dottle who got 10 fantasy points a flex option in some leagues had 11 touches for 59 yards so he was highly efficient over five yards per touch but this is a guy who caught four passes the Cowboys were trailing in the scheme he got five targets he was the guy that they were trusting as a pass catcher because last year Zico Elliott although he had a lot of catches he wasn't efficient on those he's not as efficient anymore not as dynamic can't break as many tackles Rico Dotto can be that guy and I think he has more upside as the season goes on for this Cowboys offense now before we get into a final guy that you really don't need to be adding but i see a lot of people wanting to add him i just want to say hit the subscribe button 65 percent of you are still not subscribed to this youtube channel here's your urge to do so we're growing like gangbusters and if you find these videos helpful i would appreciate it our gentlemen's agreement and the ladies i see some ladies out there in the comments as well shake on it right now the ladies and gentlemen's agreement that you hit that subscribe button if you find these videos helpful it really helps this channel go a long way so i appreciate you all a ton hit that subscribe button okay before we get to those sickles i forgot i had one more guy here because i want to talk about gus edwards who i i, I say i I don't want you to add him but i also don't want you to drop him either which sounds a little bit weird but let me break it down because this chargers backfield in week two gus Edwards actually played more snaps one more than jk dobbins 33 gus Edwards actually had one more carry believe it or not this dude had 18 carries just 17 i shouldn't say just 17 but 17 for jk dobbins so it was a split backfield from that regard and that was a change from week one where you can see right here according to pff jk dobbins had 33 carries gus Edwards 24 but here's the problem jk dobbins is going out there and like he did in week two against carolina having 130 plus yards for the second straight week while meanwhile while Gus Edwards is going out there with the more or similar opportunities and getting just 59 yards averaging you know three yards per touch if that and Gus Edwards isn't really doing anything as far as it goes from a receiving standpoint ran just six routes last week so he doesn't have the receiving upside and he's not being efficient and not only that but according to PFF in week two it was JK Dobbins getting the goal line work not Gus Edwards so you're not getting the red zone touchdown upside the ca pass catching upside or efficiency that's brutal so when I see people trying to add Gus Edwards he's available right now in about 45 percent of fantasy leagues I'm just not spending a priority waiver okay if you're in a super deep league 
league, yeah, a guy who got 18 carries is interesting and somebody maybe you want to roster, but where is the upside going to come from? And also keep in mind that they face the Carolina Panthers, who have the worst run defense in the NFL, don't have their best defensive player now, Derek Brown, who's going to help stop the run, and they had a massive lead in this game. Will this happen often? I don't know. So I'm a little bit skeptical about adding Gus Edwards, but again, I'm not trying to drop him unless you want to pick him up for somebody we talked about earlier in this league, uh, this video, then go ahead and do it. But I'm not trying to drop him because he did have 18 carries in a run first offense. So if something happens to J.K. Dobbins, you're looking at a workhorse running back. Okay, now finally, we're going to get to those deeper leagues, those 1% sickle leagues. Cam Akers is the first guy who this guy was a little bit more of a secret before the Sunday night football game. But we saw Damian Pierce did not play in that game with a hamstring. He didn't really practice most of the week in full capacity. So maybe he misses more time. And Cam Akers is somebody who had, who had success not only in training camp, but the preseason. He was looking great out there. And now he might actually be the running back two on this team. And for what it's worth, Joe Mixon left last game with an ankle injury. Now he did return to the game, but this is again, something with an ankle injury that maybe it starts to affect him. It gets sore. It gets swollen a little bit after the game. The adrenaline wears off. The shots they give him in the locker room wear off, right? And now you're looking at a guy who did return to the game with the ankle injury, but maybe he's limited in practice. And that's what I would expect this week for Joe Mixon, who basically missed all of training camp as well with an injury and aging running back. Cam Akers is now looking like more of a priority ad, not just in deeper leagues, but all leagues. The next guy I'll talk about is Marshawn Lloyd, who is currently available in over 85% of fantasy leagues because he did return for the Green Bay Packers, their third round rookie, who's dealt with multiple injuries now in training camp and to start the year. He returned and he played just 10 snaps, but he, they were limiting his role. He was purposely on a pitch count because he's coming off with a hamstring injury. And this is a guy that, look, he's not going to overtake J uh, Josh Jacobs, who literally had 30 carries last week on 47 snaps, who literally went for 130 plus yards. He's looked great his first two games. But if something happens to Josh Jacobs, you could be damn sure that the rookie Marshawn Lloyd's going to have a bigger role. So again, somebody to stash. Next guy I want to talk about played all the way back on Thursday Night Football, and it's the rookie Jalen Wright. He's available in over 80% of fantasy leagues right now because here's the deal. Raheem Mostart missed that game, and there's some talks that he can miss more time. And also in that game, Jeff Wilson left late with an injury. On the final play of the game, it looked like Devon Chan got banged up, but they said it's nothing serious. So right now, it looks like Jalen Wright, who had five uh, touches in that game on Thursday Night Football, didn't do much with them, but did have five touches. It looks like heading into this week, week three, if Jeff Wilson's not right, if Raheem Mostart can't return, which it seemed pretty questionable, looks like Jeff or Jalen Wright could already be a top two running back for the Dolphins. And we know that they like to use multiple running backs and multiple running backs can be productive in that offense. Now, I want to just mention Alexander Madison quickly again, because he's still available in like 65% of leagues. And then there's a guy who's available in 99.9% .9 of leagues. I think he's probably available in 100%. But before we get there, Alexander Madison, look, he still had a decent role. Like it was not anything crazy, but it actually got worse from week one. He played just 14 snaps. Zamir White's role increased 40 snaps total. Zamir White, 23 routes run to Madison, just eight. But Alexander Madison did see the goal line work in this game. And that did result in a goal line touchdown. So again, if he's available and he's like the only thing out there, sure, you can add him, but I'm not running to do so. Like we mentioned last week, I'm not running to do so. Now that guy who's available in 99.9% .9 of leagues is a former undrafted free agent, a 23 year old running back for the Tennessee Titans. And it's Julius Chestnut. And Julius Chestnut is a beast. This guy is highly athletic. He's 228 pounds. He actually had an opportunity to play in the NFL. I, I believe last year, maybe the year before he had some nice success in uh, a game or two for them. He can catch passes. And the reason why he's interesting is because Tajay Spears suffered an ankle injury, questionable to return Sunday, never return Sunday. So this is Tony Pollard's backfield, but not only is it Tony Pollard's backfield, well now also I believe it's going to become a little bit of Julius Chestnut's backfield for maybe, you know, 15, 20, 25 snaps for a, a week or two if Tajay Spears was forced to miss time. And Tony Pollard is a guy who's never been able to sustain a full workload. He didn't do it last year in Dallas. He got banged up the year before that. So I think that this could be an interesting spot for a guy who's available in 99% of leagues before he starts getting more hype. Now the final guy I'll talk about is Isaac Correndo, who's available in 99% of leagues. He's now the running back too, as long as Christian McCaffrey is out for the 49ers. And McCaffrey, they're saying, could be out for six plus more weeks. So he's the running back too. He's going to be behind Jordan Mason. Don't expect much usage from him though, because Debo Samuel will also see carries. Jordan Mason has an elite workhorse role right now. But if something happens to Jordan Mason, the rookie Isaac Correndo, I don't expect him to be as great as Mason has been, right? But Horrendo is a guy who has elite speed, sort of a raw prospect out of Louisville, but 221 pounds of great speed. He could have at least the frame to be a workhorse back. That's if something happened to Jordan Mason. So again, here's all the guys for your deeper leagues, for most of your normal leagues out there that you should be adding at the running back position heading into week three before your friends do. The wide receiver video will be releasing on Tuesday morning, and maybe it's out by the time you're watching this. And when it does, it will pop up right here. So best of luck, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Again, before you go, hit that subscribe button.